Shalom, shalom, sisters. First and foremost, gotta give all honor and glory and praise to the Most High God of Israel. Call Yahweh Bashemir Shai. I pray that one y'all are doing well in the spirit and having a good week so far. And I just want to get on here really quick and give a quick exhort on the spirit of fighting. Because a lot of us, if not all of us, are just trying to make it, man. Just trying to endure through these trials. And sometimes it feels like it's just one thing after another. And it's like, dang, bro, it's always something. Like, I'm just trying to chill. And we get hit with the right hook, the left hook. And it's just always something. So I just wanted to remind sisters that we're built for this. We're built for this. And as you can see, the title is of this video, The Spirit of Fighting. It's not on you. It's in you. The spirit of fighting is in us. So we got to think back to the times of old where our mighty, mighty, mighty forefathers and foremothers fought physically and spiritually. So we come from a nation of fighters. It's literally in our blood. Literally. You know, we always say, yeah, I'm a daughter of Sarah. You know, Daughter of the Most High, the 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 Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. So we got to be able to fight. If we say that we're of the Most High and the Most High dwells in us, the Most High is dealing with us, then we got to move in that spirit of fighting in the spirit. And I just want to pull a couple a couple accounts throughout the scriptures um, of our forefathers and foremothers that fought. That fought and came out prosperous in the end. So I got Jacob, mighty forefather Jacob, and he fought an angel and received a blessing. This is Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And he, when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And jumping down to verse 29, and Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. So... Jacob fought literally with an angel in the flesh. And all we got to do is fight these demons in the spirit. That's what we got to do. We ain't got to literally, you know, train and, you know, get the get the boxing gloves and kind of practice. Because we're going to go out and fight some real, some real deal angels, some real deal people. No, we fight not against flesh and blood. And we're going to get that um, towards, actually, I'm going to get it now. I'm going to get it towards, I, was, I had it at the end, but I'm going to get it now. The classic, Ephesians chapter 6. Because we got to put on that armor of the most high. Ephesians 6 and 11 reads, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And that's mine right there because we got we to gotta make sure that we're continuously fighting. Yes, it gets hard. Yes, we get tired. Yes, we get fed up. But it's all a part of the Most High's plan. He plans to give us that expected end, as it says in Jeremiah. And we got to realize that all this fighting that we're doing now is to help us in that evil day, to help us when all hell breaks loose, when we're, you know, in different situations, like, we don't know. We might be separated from our husbands if we're married. We might have to fend for ourselves, find water, to cl that's clean water to drink. We might have to 
venture out for our own food. We have to hide from Esau or whatever the case may be. We got to make sure that we're able to call upon the name of the Lord in that time and to be strong and have that armor of the Most High so we can withstand the evils to come in that day when all hell breaks loose, when it's doomsday. Reading on. Ephesians 6 and 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So we got to have our loins girt, man. We got to have our loins girt about with truth. We got to make sure that we keep the law, statute, commandments to the best of our abilities while we're fighting. And this is going to aid in our fight. We fight because we're fighting for our laws. We're fighting because we know that the Most High is not going to forsake us. And that he said, if we faint not, we shall re we shall reap the reward. So I can. So keeping this in mind, we got we to gotta make sure that we're on point. We got to make sure we're on point. And hold on. And so I hear verse 17, Ephesians 6 and 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we got to pray always. We got to pray and praying that the most high instills in us that spirit to keep fighting, to keep enduring, because the most high said to pray without ceasing. He said, if you believe in what you pray, he'll, he, he'll grant it to you. Why wouldn't the most high want to not grant us what we ask for in righteousness. He wants to give us the righteous desires of our hearts. He wants to. That's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. You're praying to the Most High, asking him to, Baba Kasha, give me strength, Lord. Please give me strength to fight. Please give me strength to endure through these troubles and this captivity in everyday life and these spirits that plague me. The Lord is pleased to hear that. And he's just to give it to us as, as long as we keep fighting and wanting to fight. But going back to back up here. <laughs> so we must know our power. We must know our power. Our mighty forefather fought an angel. We can do the same and fight against these demons. The Most High gave us the power to fight against these demons. And these spirits and the things that we struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis are beneath us. They're beneath us. And so I feel, forgive me for this, this dumb dog, Satan. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the Most High has not given us over to the spirit of fear. We can't be fearing. Dang, I don't know if this, I don't know if I'm ever overcome the spirit. Oh, I'm nervous about this happening to me and this person out to get me and this, this, now the third. No, we can't have the spirit of fear. We got to have what the Most High has given us. Because if the Most High hasn't given it to us, that means it's of Satan. So Satan comes and brings fear and doubt and worry. But the Most High has given us power, power to rebuke that. Say, Argathasha Tamba, Shimei Awashai. He's given us that spirit of power and a love and a sound mind. A sound mind to know, like, I can fight this battle. I got your help by Shimei Awashai. I got this. Verse, so like here, chapter 10, verse 19 of Luke reads, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon so like a tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that's plain. That's plain. And that's in red letters. So Yahweh Shimei Awashai 
has given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, all the power in the wicked devices of Satan that tries to get us out of the spirit, that try to get us to give up in this truth, to get us to go back in the world. And nothing by shall nothing shall by any means hurt you. Whether it be man, whether it be spirits, whether it be Satan, whatever. The most high how about Shemina has given us power to fight against this. And the next person is Esther, the mighty, mighty, mighty foremother Esther. She fought in the spirit by fasting. And if you haven't read the book of Esther, I highly, highly, highly suggest that y'all read it. But I'm going to just get these two precepts. And reads from chapter 4, verse 15. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And I, if I perish, I perish. So Esther was willing to die about her people. She was willing to die. So this is another way we can fight in the spirit, by fasting. When we fast, we afflict our bodies. You know, we're we're putting away, you know, watching TV or, you know, whatever it is, whatever you're fasting from, aside from water and food, you're showing the most high that you're you're locked in. Like I'm locked in. I'm serious about this. I'm really trying to beseech you. You how about Shemir Al Shai on this matter? And Esther did that for the nation of Israel in that time. And it's so beautiful and it's so mighty. And that's an ultimate way to fight in the spirit. And the next one is Daniel. So Daniel fought in the spirit by praying. And again, this wasn't going to be long. So I was going to get one precept just to back that up. Daniel chapter 6. And verse 10 reads, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So he did this aforetime, meaning this Daniel, he's you, he has a good prayer relationship. He has a good relationship in general with Yahweh Hashem Shai. So as soon as he saw that the king had signed that wicked declaration, he knew exactly, he, he didn't even think twice, he didn't even have any other thoughts but to go to his house, get on his knees and pray to the Most High, how about Shemir Al-Shai? That was his instinct. That's what it's got to be for us in the spirit when we have vexations come our way, when we have all hell breaking loose, we got to immediately pray, immediately go to your how about Shemir al because that's our defense. He's the one who gives us our armor. He's the one who's going to fight for us in the spirit while we hold our peace. Exodus 14 and 14. And the next one is Judith. Mighty sister Judith. She told others and encouraged others in Israel to beseech Yahweh Shemir Al-Shai, to beseech the Lord. This is Judas chapter 8 and verse 15. For if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God, for God is not as man that he may be threatened. Neither is he as a son of man that he should be wavering. Therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us. And he will hear our voice if it please him. And that's mighty right there that she said something right there. Because a lot of the times we we do it kind of subconsciously. When we pray for something, we expect subconsciously, even though we don't say it or really immediately think it. Sometimes when we pray, we're like, okay, we think it's going to come immediately. We think, and don't get me wrong, the most I can definitely work very quick or he can take a couple minutes, he could take days, he could take weeks, months, years, whatever. The most I, you know, his ways are not his way, our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we, we're on the most high's timing. We're waiting on him. So we can't, we can't threaten the most high. He's not as man that can be threatened. See us, we can be threatened. You know, Esau threatened you at your job. Oh, I'm going to fire you if you don't continue to 
you know, get this type of rating on your job, whatever. The most I don't operate like that. This is his game. This is his show. This is he runs this. So Judith right here was saying, just let us wait. And there's beauty in waiting. There's beauty in waiting and continuing to fight. Wait for our salvation of him. Wait for the salvation of the Lord and call upon him to help us. That is part of fighting. Fighting isn't always, you know, some elaborate, complex thing, you know, doing the most. Simply waiting and calling upon the Lord. Like, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Call you, how about you, i praising him in advance. Waiting for the Lord, and he will hear our voice if it please him. If we're doing what's pleasing to him, keeping these law statute commandments, and he will he, he will hear our voice. And jumping down the same chapter, Jude chapter 8, reading verses 24 and 25 reads, Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which tried us even as he did our fathers. So we got to give thanks to Yahweh Shem Yashai that he's even dealing with us, that we're even going through hell bill stacking up in this captivity is something one thing after another we're battling with this demon battling with that it's contention between this person and that but what all that we got to give thanks to the most high through all that because he's trying us he's dealing with us as he did our fathers and we know that the most high was definitely dealing with our forefathers and our foremothers because we read the accounts every day most high willing so that's a blessing that is a blessing because he definitely tried our forefathers and our foremothers. So if he's dealing with us and he's trying us through the spirit, we should be giving thanks. We should be giving thanks to him. And I also wanted to just point out David really quick. David, he constantly besought the Lord too through psalms and praises. And it's a million psalms, a million psalms that you can bring out for that. But, um... Just don't give up, sisters. Keep fighting a good fight because we can do this. We got this, and we're not a weak people. Contrary to what society pushes, what Satan pushes, we're not a weak people. And we must gird up our loins and fight until the very, very end. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 10, and verse 25. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall... The Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. So fear not. Just like we said in second, just like we went over in Second Timothy, chapter one verse seven. Fear not. That is not of the Most High. Don't be dismayed. Know the power that you serve. Be strong and be courageous. And the Lord is gonna handle the rest. He's gonna handle your enemies. He's gonna handle these wicked spirits trying to come at you. He got that. Just just hold your peace. Hold your peace. He's going he gonna to handle them spirits as long as you're fighting. Whom you're fighting. It says, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. You got to fight now. That's a key word, fight. And this is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we got to fight the good fight of faith. Have faith that you can fight until the very end. Lay hold on to eternal life. Lay hold on it. Hold on tight to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in this truth. Hold on tight to these laws and commandments. Keep it close to your heart. Keep it in your mind. Keep it always with you and in you. Because we have been called. We have been called into this marvelous truth, this marvelous light, this marvelous faith. And we got to... Um, remember that we, we profess this, we profess this to sisters, people who come in contact with our family members like, yeah, we got to come repent, come back to the most high. You know, we profess a good profession before many witnesses, many witnesses are watching us in our daily walk with the most high and we cannot bring a bad name to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So we got to fight the good fight of faith. Take it on with good courage. Be bold. Keep fighting. This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So we must have faith that we can continue to fight. 
And it's pleasing in the sight of the Lord to see us wanting and willing to fight against these demons. The Most High wants warriors in these last days. Warriors. And princesses can be warriors. Okay, period. But... Uh, for real, the most I want warriors in the spirit. So we gotta we gotta tap into that. We gotta tap into it. And this is book of Hebrews chapter eleven, verse six. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we gotta diligently seek the most high. Diligently. Every day we gotta seek the most high. And the book of First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13 reads, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So it's plain. We got to gird up our loins, sisters, and hope to the very end that the Most High will give us that good reward for our labors, Most High willing, because we were in that spirit of fighting. So this battle is not carnal, it's spiritual, and it starts with the mind. It's all about your mindset. As soon as we change our mindsets to get into that fighting mindset, hey, we're going to be good, most high willing. And I'm going to close it out with this, the classic precept, Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So keep enduring sisters i love y'all so much it was just a quick exhort lord willing it was edifying to y'all i'm here for y'all and i love y'all so very much and call you how about you know shy sisters and y'all have a blessed week in the spirit shalom